Well, hey guys, uh, we're here with uh, Rohir Blom, uh, engineer at GE. So Rohir, tell us about yourself and, and where we are. All right, well, Jacob, uh, welcome at GE Global Research. We're here at the uh, research center of uh, GE company. Um, Global research is uh, what we um, what we say is the innovation uh, motor behind uh, GE. So we are here with uh, hundreds of world-class engineers and scientists thinking about the future of GE, thinking about the toughest problems that uh, the GE company is facing and developing the technology that will go into the uh, next generation. Wow, okay, so we're here um, amongst many individuals who are who are uh, developing this, these this groundbreaking stuff, um, and and so what I'd like my students to know is that the the math that they're seeing in their math classroom is relevant to uh, the important um, innovation that's happening here uh, amongst you and um, everybody you work with. So let me ask you a, a couple of questions. Sure. Um, in terms of the topics that my students see, uh, let us know if, if you use or see these topics in your day-to-day -day work here. Okay. Um, scientific notation. Yep. All right. Uh, solving equations. Absolutely. Uh, solving systems of equations. Mm -hmm. Even more. Uh, linear and nonlinear functions. Uh, yes. Uh, Pythagorean theorem. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Rational and irrational numbers. Uh, daily. Uh, integer exponents and square roots. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think, I think, uh, I think my point is made. Let's go to systems of equations because that's a huge topic for my students this year. Um, tell us about how systems of equations play into your line of work. Okay, yeah. So it's a huge topic for your students. It's actually also a huge topic for me and the team that I'm working with. Um, and just to explain that, let me tell you a little bit about the kind of work that I'm doing. Because I'm a controls engineer. Um, and so with the, uh, the other controls engineers that we have working here at the, uh, the research center, we design the control system that goes into the GE gas turbines, wind turbines, locomotives, and so on and so forth. So what's, what's a control system? And just to talk about that, let's just take an example of, I think, some, something that all of your students know. That's a drone. Okay. Um, flying and, drones? Yeah, the flying drones. Okay, okay. Um, a, a flying drone would not be able to fly without a control system. And here's why. Because a, a drone has all these propellers that, is, that essentially allows it to you know, take off and you know, make all these you know, acrobatic motions. Um, but in order to do that, what it needs to do is continuously measure where am I? How am I moving? What's my orientation? What's my speed? And with that information, yeah, like that. There they are. Um, with that information, um, the drone needs to make decisions on how to change the speed of all of those individual propellers to you know, make those changes. So to make corrections, obviously if one um, propeller is going a little bit faster, it will start rotating in this direction. Um, and if you make other changes, it will start moving in space. And these adjustments need to be done very carefully. And that's precisely what the control system is doing. So it's taking those measurements and then it's solving equations. Equations that basically represent the physics of the drone. Okay. Um, and with the uh, description of those physics in those equations, plus the measurements, we can then find out, okay, how do we need to change the rotational speed of those motors to make sure that it's the motions that we want this drone to perform is actually happening. As the drone is in motion, uh, how how often are these systems of equations being solved? Oh, that's in the order of milliseconds. So up to like hundreds, multiple, uh, or even multiple hundred times per second. <laughs> so that's really, really very fast. And these equations were, were programmed by people such as yourself in, into the system. Yeah, that's, a, that's exactly what a controls engineer is doing. Okay, okay. 
Um, wow, okay, so, all right, let me wrap my head around this. Um, it, is there, you know, one thing that my students see when they're solving um, their systems of equations is that sometimes they'll run into a situation where they find that there's no solution. Mm -hmm. And so um, can you, can you kind of apply that to you know, the drone? What happens when, when if, if there were a situation where the system is solved and there's no solution, what happens in that situation? Well, it's very simple. If there is no solution, it means that we cannot tell a propeller what to do. If that happens, within a second, a drone would crash. Oh. So it's really as simple as that. A drone would simply crash. So it's probably... So it cannot happen. It's important to say that we need to understand what no solution looks like so that you can take the proper precautions to avoid that from happening. Yeah. So it's an incredibly important task of the controls engineer to completely understand when this can actually happen. What could potentially cause the, you know, the system of equations and the way that we are solving those systems of equations potentially might not result in a solution. Because that outcome cannot occur. Things that we're making here at GE, you know, you can imagine that you know, no solution there could mean a gas turbine would blow up or a wind turbine would crash right. or a locomotive would you know, like explode. Right. And it cannot happen. Right. It's, it's right. absolutely, yeah. it's not an option. Right. And so it really is for safety reasons incredibly important that we understand beginning and end when that can happen and what kind of precautions we can take to make sure that if such you know, situation occurs, how we can fall back and make sure that nothing you know, uh, serious is going to come out of that. Uh, could you uh, describe um, these systems of equations in, in something other than flying drones? Is there something that you and your team specifically work on here uh, that um, is relevant to systems of equations? Absolutely. Um, because let's be fair, we as GE, we do not make drones, but we make uh, control systems for pretty much all of the say, the big assets that GE is making. So let's talk about wind turbines. In fact, I myself, I'm working very actively on the design of the control system for the next generation turbines of GE. And in, in a wind turbine, um, there's also a lot of controls technology. I mean, okay, everybody knows a wind turbine. It has a tower and then it has these rotating blades. Um, and what that does is it's, uh, it's driving a generator, which you know, creates the electricity. Right. Um, and so um, what you might not realize is that for this to work properly, a control system is really critically important. And the, the procedure is just the same as what I just talked about um, for a drone. Um, for a turbine, in fact, there's two things that are really important. One is, how do we make sure that it produces the, say, the maximum amount of energy? So to make sure that you know, it's as efficient as possible right. in doing its task. Right. And at the same time, we also need to make sure that the wind turbine's integrity is preserved. So that it's under influences of the wind does not fall apart. Okay, so but the integrity, um, are you referring to its durability, its, its ability to s s withstand the, the forces that act against it? Absolutely, that's okay. precisely what I mean. Okay. And so, um, in order to do that, again, a control system is taking measurements of um, say different things in a wind turbine, like you know, the way that it's you know, moving back and forth, um, the, the speed at which it's rotating, um, and a number of other things. And all of that goes, in, again, into a controls computer, a controls computer that is equipped with, um, again, systems of equation that describe the physics of a wind turbine. Programmed by you and your team. Absolutely, that's you know, the core of what we're doing. And um, that is, I mean, the, 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 the physics of a wind turbine, as you probably can imagine, 
is, is not straightforward. Um, so there's a lot of, say, complex equations that are necessary to describe that. But the end result is that when we combine those um, systems of equations with the measurements that we uh, get from uh, you know, the different aspects of the wind turbine, it results in, okay, how do we need to change the pitch angles of the blades? Um, if we change it, um, it may capture more wind or less wind, and therefore we can make sure that we get more energy and at the same time also adjust the forces, like you said, that the wind turbine will experience. And that's precisely how we are um, you know, ensuring that these two goals that we just talked about are ensured. And so the result of solving these equations, the outcome of, the, the, um, of that process, really results in something that is uh, sent to the motors in the, uh, um, in the wind turbine. Um, and those motors are changing the angle at which the, uh, the, the pitch um, or the blades are, are essentially positioned. A topic that my students run into this year is, is the idea of functions and they look at uh, linear and nonlinear functions. And would you be able to give an example with these wind turbines of, of, uh, of uh, a function? Oh, yeah. OK. And so the, the physics that I was just describing that is solved in the control system, um, they're very often functions of different variables. So let me give a very specific example. The okay. power output of a wind is of a, the power output of a wind turbine is a function of its rotational speed. Okay, so uh, the, the amount of power, the amount of energy that the wind turbine is putting out, it, it is a function of the speed of the blades spinning. Around. Exactly. Okay. And so what the control system does is it's taking that function and it's solving an equation plus another you know, set of equations to make sure that we get the maximum amount of power. Okay. Depending on wind conditions, so there's a lot of things that come into the, that play, but right. one of the equations that goes into that is a function describing the relationship between speed and power output. Fantastic. Okay, so let's switch to, to a new topic. Scatter plots and trend lines, is there, um, is, is there relevance to that in your life? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we use uh, scatter plots and trend lines a lot um, in uh, our work here. Um, but you know what? Let's just change to you know something outside to my work here is in the controls engineer, um, because I'm using um, uh, scatter plots and trend lines also in my personal life. I'm a runner um, and an obstacle course racer, and I'm pretty competitive, so. I would really like to use any you know, kind of methods available to improve my training, improve my results. Right, right. And one of the things, I mean, being the control engineer that I have is, uh, that I am is, you know, take measurements, evaluate those, and see what can I learn from that. And scatter plots are an excellent tool to do that. And so I'm using those. Um, really to improve my training. Okay, so, so can you give an example of one of these scatter plots that you use? What does the x-axis look like? What does the y-axis look like? Um, sure, so one of the things that I'd really like to find out, I mean, I'm not the youngest guy anymore, is as you go and you get older, do you have a disadvantage? Um, uh, in you know, finishing time compared to really the younger racers. So is there a correlation, so to speak, between age and finishing time? Okay. And so a scatter plot that I've made um, is having as a horizontal axis, indeed the age of a racer on the vertical axis, it would have the finishing time. Okay. And then every racer's finishing time would be a, you know, a dot in that scatter plot. Okay. And um, in fact, uh, for a race that I recently completed, I made that plot and I was you know, pretty satisfied to see that there was not a very strong correlation between age 
and finishing time. Okay, so so this so the scatter plot, the, the points on your graph um, were probably not very close to your trend line. They were kind of all over the place. Yeah. So, okay. in fact, the trend line was pretty much horizontal, which uh, essentially means is that the average finishing time um, for each age was pretty much the same. So the, I mean, the, the slope of the trend line was close to, to zero? Yes. Okay. I mean, if there, if there had been a, you know, a strong correlation, um, meaning that as people get older, they would get slower, right. then we would have seen an upward angle. Uh, Finishing time would increase as you, know, you go further along the age axis. Right, right. So but we didn't see that. And so personally, I was you know, pretty satisfied to see that, and that you know, motivated me even more to continue my training um, and knowing that you know, I didn't have or don't have a disadvantage compared to any other racer participating. That's, that's fantastic. So, so you luckily did not have a scatter plot showing a trend line that showed a strong correlation between as age increasing, it increases, um, finishing time would increase, meaning that it, was, it took longer, meaning slower. That scatter plot would have had a trend line with a positive slope. Exactly. Okay. Um, that's fantastic. Thank you for the example. Is there any advice that you have for my students based upon um, you know, your experiences that you've had in your own life and your career here? The one thing that I would like the students to take away from this is they can do it. Never, and never, never give up. Never give up and also stop telling yourself, I cannot do this. They can do it. You heard it from him. You can do it. And from me. You can do it. All right, well, thank you so much, Rohir. This has been, uh, this has been amazing. Thank you for allowing me to come and talk to you here in the, in the lab and, uh, and, and speaking with my students. Well, you're very welcome. It's great talking to you.